independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Are there any senators in the chamber wishing to change his or her vote? If not, the yeas are 49, the nays are 51. The motion is not agreed to. Under the previous order, the Senate stands in recess, subject to the call of the chair. Over. Done. That's it. Put it to bed. Good night now. Now we're moving on. Super Bowls this weekend. That's it. Now it's just about getting in front of the cameras, telling how awful this is, telling how this is the worst thing in the history of forever, how America no longer exists, blah, 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 blah. A witness, a document. No witnesses, no documents in an impeachment trial is a perfidy. It's a grand tragedy, one of the worst tragedies that the Senate has ever overcome. America will remember this day, unfortunately, where the Senate did not live up to its responsibilities, where the Senate turned away from truth and went along with a sham trial. This, if the president is acquitted with no witnesses, no documents, the acquittal will have no value because Americans will know that this trial was not a real trial. It had no witnesses, no documents. It is a tragedy on a very large scale. I will be now going up to my caucus to discuss what we're doing next. I will not talk about it here. Okay? Thanks. Wow. It's the greatest, worst thing in the history of forever, and I can't believe this happens. Now, if you could send us some money and you don't mind, I'm going to go upstairs find out what we're having for dinner because everything worked out the way we thought it was going to work out. But I'm going to act like this is my shocked face, Chuck Schumer. Oh, God. How did Romney vote? Mr. Romney. I... Oh. Feinstein and Graham? Mrs. Feinstein. Aye. Ms. Ernst, no. Mrs. Fisher? No. No. Mr. Gardner? No. no. Mrs. Gillibrand? Aye. Mr. Graham? No. 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 Susan Collins? Ms. Collins? She was an I. But you know who wasn't an I? Two people. That's it. Two people. Really, really, really. One person tipped the balance of this last night. People will focus on Lisa Murkowski today. But. But. Lamar Alexander last night. That was it. That was it. Once Lamar gave the word last night about his vote. It was over, and they knew it. We're trying to ask him, you know, when did you make your decision? And he's like, you know, oh, I've made it. And did you tell your Republican leader? Yes, I've told the leader. When will we find out? Within the hour. We're waiting for the statement. It comes, and he is a no on witnesses. 79, he's retiring. He had nothing to to lose. It was it. It was over. It was done. Because... Everybody had calculated the votes. There wasn't going to be a surprise, but you never know, right? I go back to the old adage, if you're a salesperson, you know this as good as anybody. And what's that? Never, ever, ever count your commission and your check until you know the check that you got from somebody clears and it's in the bank. It was it. It was done. Because 50 votes would have left them In a tie. In a situation where it's a tie, this is what happens. It would go to Chief Justice Roberts. Now, in any other situation when there's a tie that's not dealing with impeachment and removal, it would be the vice president, who's the president of Congress and Senate, right? that, That would have been his gig, right? But... Not an impeachment. And Chief Justice Roberts is so excited that he was let off the hook by Murkowski today. But once Alexander said, and eh, no, he said no. And that was it. It was over. It was done with. So now they run out and they'll all go, this is the worst thing in the history of histories. And this is a tragedy. And this is the greatest tragedy in the history of tragedies. And they'll all raise money off of it. 
which is totally fine. That's what they're going to do. Trump will celebrate it. and He'll probably send out a bunch of silly tweets. Now we have to get to the business of what takes place next. And what takes place next looks pretty simplistic. It will be closing arguments. Closing arguments for a couple hours, you know, few hours. Not quite sure how many hours the closing arguments are going to go on for. And then they will vote for an acquittal. And once that's done, we're moving out. We're moving on. Iowa's coming up. I have to think somewhere in the back of the minds of Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, who's really popped apparently, you know, and Bernie Sanders, that this is awesome. This is good. They're happy. They're thrilled. It's over. They can now move on and get out to Iowa and get ready for the caucus on Monday. They have to be pumped. Now, will it end tonight? It's hard to say. They could push it out a little bit to Monday or Tuesday. I don't think they will. I think if I know anything about Mitch McConnell... He's probably going to have it get done tonight. But I'm sure he's talking right now with the uh, with the president. You know, he's probably having some sort of conversation with the president. But now that it's over and done with, you know, they can talk about witnesses all they want. Right. They came out today and they, they had all the things that they had to say about just this in general. If there are no witnesses, no documents in this trial, there will be a permanent asterisk next to the acquittal of President Trump, written in permanent ink. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, right? What's the, what's the asterisk? Well, there was no witnesses. Never, never in the history of the histories of the histories of impeachment has this happened. No. But we live in a different time, right? Absolutely. We live in a different time. We live in a different era. By the way, never in the history of any of this stuff has there been anything that we've seen like this where it was so absolutely divided. But it's over. It's done. It's over. It's done. And even if Bolton came out there and said, everything you guys say is true. Everything you guys have said is absolutely true. Everything. He is the world's worst human being. It wasn't going to change any of this. It wasn't. It wasn't going to change any of it. You can hate Trump all you want. I got no problem with that. You can have a disdain for the way that this process has gone. You could say you're going to pay back the Republicans come November, which is what everybody says when their team loses, if you will. But the reality is exactly what it is. This was going to end up the same place. This was going to end up at the same place. You'd be frustrated. No problems. Right. I would like to have seen witnesses. Because for all the talk of what Bolton was going to do and say, we forget there were other things that Bolton has said about some of those calls that he was a part of. And I wanted to see how he was going to wiggle his way out of certain situations. Right. Because you're hearing on the news that all you're hearing is that one side without any questions. Right. Mike Tyson used to say, great, everybody's got a plan till they get punched in the face. But he said it with everybody got a plan to get punched in the face. And that was real. Everybody had a plan. So what would it look like? Right. And what would happen when other witnesses for the other side, people want witnesses, but they only want their witnesses and they want to be able to ask the questions and they don't want anybody to ask any questions. And that's something that I think. All too often, we forget. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. 
Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program this way. Love hearing from you. A lot of stuff talking tonight. We're going to hit on this some more. We're going to hit on Iowa. Uh, what's going to happen there? What's it looking like? And then, you know what? We move from Iowa almost directly straight. Just eight days later, we're on to New Hampshire, and they start coming fast and thick. And by March 3rd, a little over 30-plus days from now, we could have a clear-cut favorite that is going to take this or it could be even more of a mess when it comes to the democrats and who may be their nominee 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter feel free to tweet at me it is the chad benson show Chad Benson Show, the only place so far that the Mueller investigation hasn't deep probed for collusion. Stay tuned. This is Chad Benson. Are there any senators in the chamber wishing to change his or her vote? If not, the yeas are 49, the nays are 51. The motion is not agreed to. Under the previous order, the Senate stands in recess, subject to the call of the chair. Ah, there we go. No witnesses. Can I get a witness? The answer would be no. You cannot get a witness. Are you sure? Positive. But are you positive? 100% positive. But I can't get a witness? You cannot get a witness. You cannot get a witness. And now that that is done, we prepare to move on to the next phase of this Ridiculous kangaroo court, which is the acquittal portion of the phase. Closing arguments followed by an acquittal. Twitter question for you guys. How's this look if you're the GOP? Right? How's this look if you are the GOP? Calling no witnesses. Horrible, 30%. They look fine, 62%. Too early to tell. It depends, I think. Some people in November may have a tougher time than people who are out f- four years from now before they face another re-election. So it's, I think for some, it may look worse than others. But we also have a very short attention span. Like, super short. Right? Like, oh, you were part of that vote? Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that. Well, that's crazy. All It's all happening today, people. I'm telling you guys, everything. We've got the Super Bowl this weekend, right? And now it is a official across the pond. Prime Minister Boris Johnson calls Brexit not an end, but a beginning. A moment, he sees, of real national renewal and change. But of course, time will tell. Opportunities will present themselves, but the European exit is also a gamble, a huge gamble that could be paid in a weakened economy and job losses, at least in the short term. The road, however, is now open. The stage is set. Britain's fate now rests solely in its own hands. Yeah, so that's it. That is it. It's official. They're out 47 years. They were in the EU. Now it's over, it's done, it's dusted. So let's just look at today, shall we? So let's step back and look at what's going on around the globe today. We have got impeachment. No witnesses now. Could be a few days before this thing is done. They may decide to take a weekend on it. Closing arguments uh, uh, Monday or better yet, probably Tuesday. I'm sure Mitch McConnell and uh, Chuck Schumer behind the scenes and, 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 you know, Chuck's probably going, all right, so how do we want to do this, right? Like, do we, how do we, because I want to get our people out there. They want to be there for that. And Mitch is probably saying, all right, well, why don't we either do it later on tonight or we can do it Tuesday. It'll be after Iowa. And we'll let them go out there and it'll be right before the State of the Union. And then, you know, Trump can make his big interest. Wouldn't it be hilarious if he rolled in and he had like, it was like Kid Rock. He had like a fedora on him with a feather. I wouldn't put it past him. By the way, if you want to see something funny, as much as he drives me crazy. And you guys have no idea. I do a lot of radio shows. All over. Local, national. I do a ton of stuff. He drives me crazy. I love talking about a lot of things. I don't want to spend my life talking about this 
And uh, this this was yesterday. We, we we talked a bit about this yesterday, and about just this entire process and how this thing was crazy, and the fatigue that so many people had. And Mayor Pete said something uh, in a very candid moment. I don't know about you, but watching the news right now, watching the impeachment coverage, watching the Senate is exhausting. I I live and breathe politics, and I find it exhausting. (laughs) It's just gets you down. It makes you want to watch cartoons instead. Yes. I used to love politics, and I was kind of a wonk, right? Get deep in the weeds. It's not as fun because it's become, it's the movie Idiocracy, right? Right. Producer Phil, what was his? Uh, what was that guy's name in Antiocracy? The, the Hector the Elizondo uh, Mountain Dew Camacho. Yeah, that's kind of what it feels like. Hector Elizondo Mountain Dew Camacho feels like our president. That's what it feels. It feels like this is where we've become. We've become. This is all show with little substance. I like the substance. I'm okay with some of the show. Right. That's the one thing that made America. So amazing is we did it bigger, but we did it better. Now we do it reality TV style, and that is frustrating. And it's not just Donald Trump, by the way. Before Donald Trump, it got to be a bit of reality TV, but he was the icing on the cake. And it gets frustrating. It does. So we've got Brexit. They like, we're out of here, mate. There was one lady. I was, she was the greatest. Listen to this. I've been working towards Brexit for three years, Um, but tomorrow's the dawn of a new day and I'm really excited about it, so we're going to party hard tonight, even if I have to be carried out on a stretcher, I feel so terrible, I'm still going to party because I can't wait for my country to be free, independent and great. (laughs) Even if you've got to carry me somewhere. I thought that was hilarious. And then we've got the uh, coronavirus, which by the way, not since 1960 have they done something. And the CDC decided they had to do it. We'll touch on that more about impeachment as well. Greg Columbus is going to join us, Radio America News Director. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Oh, God. So here's the timeline. Monday, closing arguments. Tuesday, State of the Union. Wednesday, final vote. That's what several people are reporting. Joining us now, Greg Corumbus. He's the Radio America News Director. And on top of that, there's a little three martini lunch. We did that a couple times here uh, this week. Uh, Greg, what's up, brother? Good, uh, good to be on your show this week, Chad. Uh, name any time, dude. You know, I love doing it with you guys doing over there. That's a lot of fun. So uh, this is not a shock. And I said it was over last night after Alexander said, "No, I'm not going to do that." Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, he really kind of twisted the knife because not only was he the final vote. Uh, that uh, removed all hope for the Democrats getting what they wanted here. But his explanation was essentially, hey, you know all those arguments that you guys made? I think you're right, but it doesn't rise to the level of impeachment. And uh, I don't know if you could see the steam going out of Adam Schiff's ears at that point, but uh, probably pretty close. Here's the thing with that. I understand exactly what he's saying. And I get where the Democrats are coming from. He tried to use aid and holding aid over people's heads to 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 get information and an investigation started on what would become potentially his political rival. I totally get that. They got the aid in the amount of time that they were allowed to give the aid. There's a certain specific time you're allowed to give the aid. They still got the aid in that time. There was a lot of stuff that went along that was uncomfortable. I get that. But does it rise to the level of essentially canceling out 62 million votes? I never thought that. 
No, and I think that's been the argument all along. Uh, the argument has kind of evolved because uh, on some level, the Republicans on Schiff's committee in the House and elsewhere uh, tried to argue on the facts that there wasn't a quid pro quo. And, uh, you, you know, whether you want to use that particular phrase, obviously he was uh, he was willing to uh, kind of at least put the, the heat on uh, Ukraine with the aid over that to get in 2016 investigated in a number of different ways. Um, but in the end, this is eventually going to come down to, is this worthy of removing the president? And as we saw, there were impeachment votes last year. I think close to 100 House Democrats voted to impeach the president over mean tweets to the squad, you know, AOC and Ilhan Omar yeah. and, and, that, and that bunch. And so a lot of them would have literally voted to remove him from office for any reason offered. Oh, and God, so, yeah. And so, you know, the, the, they, they said this from day one over the Mueller situation. Well, Mueller didn't work. And then this dropped into their lap. And so, I mean, the president does keep finding ways to, to give them ammunition to go after him on, on some level, of course. But in the end, um, if they had actually waited and kept their powder dry uh, and not gone after every little thing the president did, their argument that he has to be removed would probably ring uh, with a little more credibility. But since they lit their hair on fire every single time he did something controversial, people have just stopped listening. You know, it's the old adage, right, the boy who cried wolf. And I always remind everybody, eventually a wolf shows up. But the problem is you've cried wolf so much that people stop paying attention. And I think that's just it. People would have taken a deeper dive into this had there not been Mueller, had there not been the, the front page of the Washington Post on the day that he was inaugurated, Greg, that said, oh, my God, the march to impeachment begins now and everybody gets along this. Right. And now you understand that there is people out there, there are tons of people out there that understand that trump has done some stuff that quite frankly don't rise to the level of presidential and at the same time they've done some stuff that don't rise to the level of being a member of the most hallowed you know elected officials on the planet because they've turned just as much reality television as anybody else exactly i mean we're a polarized nation i mean you talk about it all the time so do so do i and uh that, that fact hasn't changed so people come into this and really any political controversy these days, with about 90 percent or higher of Americans already having their minds made up just based on who's in the who's in the dispute. And so when when you walk into the situation like this with with that kind of uh, divide in the nation, you've got to come at it with uh, with some purpose and with some specificity. And instead, they were just uh, throwing spaghetti against the wall. And this is the one that actually got to the point where even Nancy Pelosi was convinced to move it forward. But uh this this was this was mishandled from the beginning. Uh, the resistance started before he even got sworn in, and honestly, it's provided a ton. Of, it's provided a ton of cover for Trump because <laughs> a lot of stuff he's done uh, in a lot of different ways what individually would have gotten a, a whole lot more blowback. But because they you know turned the volume up to eleven on everything, uh, it just it just it's just noise now. Talking to Greg Columbus, uh, Radio America's uh, esteemed and amazing news director over there and uh, one of the co-hosts of Three Martini Lunch. Here's something for you, Greg. So I look around here and I say, OK, Lamar, he did it, Murkowski, but you had Mitt and you had Susan Collins. It was kind of be expected. Uh, at the end of the day, though, no witness. First time in our history, there will be no witnesses or additional documents uh, and information brought into this. Does this hurt the Republicans come November and beyond, or because we are a nation as polarized as we are, we're also a nation where we have the attention span of a gnat and people tend to forget. Exactly. I was just talking about this on the three martini lunch today that, uh, you know, a week after we killed Baghdadi and now what are we two or three weeks after we killed Soleimani, they're completely forgotten about. And so impeachment's a huge thing, but a lot is going to happen, particularly in the presidential campaign year. Between now and November, it's nine months away. And will it still be an issue? Will it still be a talking point? Will the Democrats try to contend that, you know, the Republicans covered up? Sure. But uh, ultimately, a lot of other things are going to happen between now and then. Uh, and, and folks are probably going to end up voting, at least most folks, based on factors other than impeachment. Um, I mean, you go back to the 70s. Obviously, Gerald Ford paid a price for pardoning Nixon. Uh, the Republican Party paid a price in the elections immediately following Nixon's resignation. So it's not to say that Republicans won't pay a price for this, but I think it's uh, very premature to say that this is going to be the dominant focus of the campaign. 
Ironically, I think the one who might pay the biggest price here is Susan Collins, who's actually voting for the witnesses. Because remember, her base loved her for backing Kavanaugh. The Democrats hated her. They're not going to forgive her for that just because she voted for witnesses when we still don't know how she would have voted. I guess we'll find out in a few days on how she's going to vote on acquittal or conviction. And uh, if she had just gone um, all in one direction or all in the other, she probably would have been better. But since uh, she's basically made both sides mad now, uh, she might be in a world of hurt. Wow, crazy. Greg Crumbus, appreciate you coming on, brother. Thanks so much for taking time with us tonight. Uh, Radio America's uh, esteemed news director. If you want to find Three Martini Lunch, where do they go? They go to uh, Three Martini Lunch on iTunes. That's with the number three, Martini Lunch. We're also on uh, Ricochet and wherever you get your podcast. Right on, brother. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Awesome. See you, Chad. So, so that's all going down, right? So we got all of this stuff happening. Right, we got this. We got Chuck Schumer coming out, and you know Chuck, he's very dramatic. America will remember this day, unfortunately. They won't remember this day. People don't remember yesterday. Most people don't remember what they had for lunch two days ago. I do, but that's because I eat three food groups when it comes to lunch. Today I ate a ton. Oh my God, producer Phil, we had so much food for the Super Bowl party. It was so ridiculous. Oh my God. They had to roll me over here. I couldn't even get through the door. I got to go shopping tonight because I'm buying a ton of food, too. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the Super Bowl, this is very interesting. So, of course, it's this weekend. We'll get to some of the prop bets, and it's not just all going to be about this tonight, but this is very important. So the coronavirus, as we all know, very exciting, the coronavirus. Very, very, very exciting. I spoke earlier with Alex Stone, but he's talking about a lot of different stuff. Uh, and yes, we have a new case. Even though the White House is calling coronavirus a public health emergency now and is implementing new actions to prevent the spread, CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield says it is not a time to panic. I want to emphasize that this is a serious health situation in China, but I want to emphasize that the risk to the American public currently is low. As part of the new action, foreign nationals who have been in China in the past two weeks will not be allowed to enter the U.S., and American citizens who have been to China will have to put themselves into quarantine. Yeah, so put yourself, that's weird, right? So you're putting yourself in the quarantine. Out here, we've got one member of the ASU family, they would say, who's in quarantine, but it was self-quarantine. Now they're testing several other people. The people that arrived the other day from Wuhan, the Americans who flew into Southern California, they were isolated. It was supposed to be kind of one of those isolations where, hey, you're going to spend a day or two here and everything's going to be okay. Uh, It's kind of voluntary, but we kind of highly recommend it. One person tried to leave yesterday, Alex said, and the the military at March Air Force said, yeah, we were like the whole – we're serious. I mean, you could stay longer. We we implore you to stay longer. You're not leaving. And now the CDC is quarantining them for 14 days because that is the incubation period. It can be shorter, but 14 days is what they're going to be there. Most of them are diplomats, but not all of them. So some of them have regular lives and jobs. One thing we do know, he did say, is they were going to be having a big Super Bowl party come Sunday. So they're going to be bringing them lots of pizza and beer and things like that. One thing he couldn't tell, though, I said, hey, I said, Alex, I said, you said everybody on the plane. I said, yeah. I said, just out of curiosity, what about the people that flew there to get them? Because they weren't from Wuhan. And he goes, you know, that's a very good question. I don't know. And now that we know it transmits human to human and it's happened here, that is very interesting. But we'll see. Again, not deadly. But I do know this. I've talked to a couple people who say, what China's feeding everybody as far as the number, even though they're giving us a number of like ten to 12,000 and 60,000 kind of being monitored of whether or not they have it, people are saying those numbers are really wrong and it could be a thousand times worse. They're giving them just enough to feel comfortable, but the reality is is it may be a lot worse. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter if you're just joining us earlier. They made it official, kids. There will be no witnesses at all. Zero, zilch, nada. The yeas are 49. The nays are 51. The motion is not agreed to. 
Motion not agreed to. Republicans get their way. Last night, Lamar Alexander made it official that he was not going to, which really basically put them at best case scenario of 50-50 time. Murkowski made it 51-49 this morning. Uh, and that was it. It was over and done with. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. We'll talk about what this means for the president. What this means for potentially people that are up for reelection come November. Some senators and why did Murkowski say yeah no? Chad Benson show. Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. All 65,000 seats at Hard Rock Stadium are expected to be occupied on Sunday evening at kickoff time. And nothing about this game is cheap. The average resale price for tickets is approaching $7,000 on SeatGeek, easily beating last year's Patriots-Rams contest. As for TV advertising, the going rate for a 30-second commercial is around $5.5 million. That's nice, right? It's nice right there, $5.5 million, $5.5 million. Don't think you're not going to get away from politics even... This weekend, because both Bloomberg and Trump will have. Yes, are you ready for this? Commercials. There. (laughs) I want to be away from it. Just away from it. We're kind of away from some of it now. Because if you're just joining the program, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends of all ages. The yeas are 49. The nays are 51. The motion is not agreed to. What's that mean? Chief Justice Roberts right there. It means that there will be no witnesses. So now, according to some, Monday, start of closing arguments, State of the Union Tuesday, final vote Wednesday. On top of that... You have got Iowa on Monday. Only 41 delegates are up for grabs, so it's not massive. In saying that, you won't win the nomination, but a bad showing here. And this isn't just about whether or not you knew you weren't going to do well. You do really poorly here. Don't even make it to a second or third vote kind of thing. You understand that it's also about donors, right? If donors look at you and they perceive that you cannot get the job done, they will take their money and their support and they'll go elsewhere. So it's not just about, oh, you know, we didn't have a great showing, but we did get to a second or third vote, and that was maybe surprising. Uh, no, this is this is this is something that's real. So it, it'll be interesting to see. What takes place, right? Because Bernie Biden, I'm hearing that Klobuchar is, 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 is making some sort of move. All that being said, other people are going to be up for re-election. Congress, of course, and the senators come November. Susan Collins, she's just in a tough place, right? right? She voted, yeah. Would like to hear more witnesses, right? Which will piss off the Republicans. She voted for Kavanaugh, which pissed off the Democrats. Lisa Murkowski, she stayed steady. Lamar Alexander's retiring. Susan Collins was vulnerable anyways. She's very vulnerable. We talk a lot about how will this affect the Democrats. I mean, the Republicans, but there could be a blowback on the Democrats, right? They're 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 defending more in the Senate this time. There are some potential issues there. On top of that, in Congress, there's some issues there as well. Right? People are looking around going, okay, you guys went hard at this for four years. And by this I mean trying to get Trump. 
What have you done? What do you have to show for this? I don't know if you have a lot to show for it. So it'll be very interesting to see how this thing plays itself out. And we do have a very short attention span. It's always be it's always been that way. But now more so than ever in the we need to have it immediacy of life. This is one of those things where we may forget all about this come Super Tuesday. The one thing is for sure, some Democrats have it. Nadler's already said just because we didn't get witnesses doesn't mean we're not getting witnesses. We're going to be subpoenaing people probably and bringing people in through the Judiciary Committees and the Intelligence Committees, and we're going to be talking to them there. They're not giving up. Know this. Trump wins again, and everything stays the way it is. He will be impeached again. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. Take the poll question I got up. How... Does not calling witnesses make the GOP look? 29% says horrible. 64% say they look fine. And 7% say eh, a little too early to tell. Take it at the old Twitter there. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Are there any senators in the chamber wishing to change his or her vote? If not, the yeas are 49, the nays are 51. The motion is not agreed to. Under the previous order, the Senate stands in recess subject to the call of the chair. And like that, the great American nightmare of this giant sham... Doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, it's a sham, right? If you're on the Democratic side, this entire thing has been a sham because the Republicans don't care about anything else except protecting the president. That's all they care about. If you're on the left, this has been a sham all along because they've been trying to impeach him since the day he was president-elect, and they've not stopped. And by the way, they're not going to stop. Nadler and them have already came out and said investigations are going to continue. They're going to continue to investigate by going in and still bringing in people to whether subpoena or not to the Judiciary Committee, to the Intelligence Committee. And hey, if you're if you're the Democrats, you knew this was coming. If you're the Republicans, you knew this was coming. Now you have a chance to go out and say stuff like this. Americans will know that this trial was not a real trial. It had no witnesses, no documents. It is a tragedy on a very large scale. But can I also not say that the investigation at the beginning of this with the whistleblower and the way that this thing kind of went down and, and a lot of stuff like that, and then you guys held all of the cards there and the Republicans complained. You said, get over it, and now... It's gone a different way, and you're complaining, and they're saying get over it. This has been a farce from the beginning, not just this. From the beginning, it has been a farce. No witnesses. Trump's not going to be removed. Closing arguments Monday, State of the Union Tuesday, final vote Wednesday, and Monday, while all that's going on, Iowa's happening. That's a lot. We got the damn coronavirus and the British have left Europe. That's a lot of stuff to soak in, right? That is a lot of stuff to bring into this thing. But it's a great tragedy. The tragedy of tragedies. Lisa Murkowski, Lamar Alexander. Susan Collins, Mitt Romney, 
Those were the four. Mitt was a yes. Susan Collins was a yes. Lamar Alexander was a no last night. That changed everything. Why? Because the best they were going to do was 50-50. 50-50, meaning the final vote would be decided by not the president of the Senate, which is the vice president of the country, because he cannot vote in impeachment because, well, I don't know, A, he works for the president, and B, he may want to be president. So they're like, we probably shouldn't allow this. Our founding fathers, they were smart. So it would go to Chief Justice Roberts, who had already signaled, I'm not going to cast the final vote. That's, that's you guys need to handle this. This was going to be you. This would be you. You guys are the representatives of the American people. You need to sort this out. You're an elected official. I am not. He is very much a traditionalist. He is a study of history, and he did not want to be that person. So it would have been 50 50. And 50 50 means nobody wins except for Trump. Because Ty goes to the runner. Once Lamar went last night, it was done. Murkowski. Today, she made it so he didn't really have to worry about making that final decision to not do it or to do it. She said, I will vote against considering motions to subpoena. She wrote in a statement, more than likely ending the impeachment trial, which it did. And she said they failed. To bring a complete case to the Senate. They failed to bring everything they needed to the Senate. That's important, right? So take away the fact that they wanted to bring certain people in and they wanted to do certain things. And, you know, they've got Bolton, right? Like, let's remember the whole Bolton thing. Because they're very excited about Bolton coming in like he was going to be the person that was going to do it. And he seemed really eager to do it. And they really wanted to do it. But they didn't do it in the House. And why was that? What he said when he refused to show up voluntarily is, if you subpoena me, I will sue you. Well, if he's so eager and so amenable to all of these things, why isn't he coming on in just super voluntary? He could come in whenever he wants. He could submit his side of the story in writing. He could have done a lot of different things. They tried to subpoena some people. They didn't cross all uh, the T's and dot the I's the right way, and it was incomplete, and they never went back for it. They rushed this. Say what you want about what the Republicans did down there, but they controlled everything, and they pushed this thing through, at a high rate of speed. Think about how long the Mueller report took. Think about, you go back and look at look at Clinton. Look at Nixon. Those weren't overnight. This was like 45, 48 days. That's, that's not a lot. That is not a lot. Would I have liked to seen people? Yeah, I'd have been fine with that. Wasn't going to change anybody's mind. I mean, Bolton could come in and tap dance in there and say, Trump is the worst and you got to hear the things he says, blah, 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 and do all those kind of things. And it's not changing people's mind. That's the other thing. Take away the senators. Right? Take away the the Congress and the managers of the House and all of the Take away all of those things. What about the people? Right? What about the people? What do they think? Even hearing, and 75% of America, according to a lot of different polls, 65, 70, they wanted to hear witnesses. But wanting to hear witnesses and seeing certain things, I could look at this and say, man, I wish Trump wouldn't have done that. I am not a fan of the way he went about it. And I think the Biden thing and the Hunter Biden thing was blown out of proportion. And I think when you go look at the timelines, 
but also know that they delivered the money in the timeline that was there. That's important, right? On top of that, does it rise to the level of removing 62 million people's votes and saying, sorry, you guys got it wrong? That is something to think about. At the end of the day, it wouldn't have mattered who was there and what information you have. People had made up their mind. They made up their mind on Trump part of the way through his campaign to be the nominee. They doubled down on him when he became the nominee. And then they really got behind him when he became the president-elect and the president, and it's not stopping. I think at the end of the day, the Democrats can go, we expected this. This is what we've got. It's time to move on. Let's figure out how we can take this and use it to our advantage to get four, five, six seats in the Senate so we can take control, to get more seats in the House so we can take control. Let's find out how we go about doing that, and let's figure out how we become the people that are back in the White House again and use all of this. I don't know what they'll do or how they'll do it, but that's where they need to focus on now. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. McConnell's going to offer a resolution that will set the trial's next steps. We'll see what that looks like. We're hearing everything from they could have worked through the night and got it done in the morning to now, you know, I was on Monday, but he wants to hold closing arguments come Monday and then vote on Wednesday. We'll see what that looks like. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. If there are no witnesses, no documents in this trial, there will be a permanent asterisk next to the acquittal of President Trump written in permanent ink. <sighs> Motions are going on right now. He's motioning. He's motioning. That's better when you're doing the Super Bowl. He motions out right. So this is the way it looks like it's going to go down. There was a first of all. There's so Mitch McConnell and and Chuck Schumer are the leaders in the Senate. One, of course, is the majority leader. The other is the minority leader. Chuck Schumer wants to put a bunch of things and amendments in there, right? So. Subpoena Mulvaney, Bolton, and a bunch of other people and want documents in the whole nine yards. So that's what what he did. So, so it goes, and they apparently had a sidebar discuss stuff. So the first thing is you had the man who is the referee, probably the best way to describe it, right? Chief Justice. And he says... If it's a 50-50 tie, I'm not breaking the tie. I'm not. I'm from a different branch of the government, a co-equal branch. But I am not an elected official. You guys do the work of the American people. This is for you guys to sort out, which is what he already said about why Lamar Alexander last night was so big because everybody knew where it was going. They didn't need 51 votes. They only needed 50 votes, the Republicans, because at 50 votes, it's a tie. And in this case, the tie goes to Trump. And it's the same thing here. So they're having several different amendments they're trying to put in. But the way that it looks like they sorted it out is Chuck Schumer got them to agree, essentially, to closing arguments come Monday. That includes 15 minutes Per senator, I believe, <laughs> to essentially say the things they're going to say. They're kind of, you know, 
rambling on. Everybody's going to have a chance to say a little something. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know. Right. I don't know what that looks like. It seems like forever. But they also got something that they wanted to have, which I found to be intriguing. Remember, Monday, while it's Iowa, Tuesday is the State of the Union. You know what Trump can't do on Tuesday? He can't say, I've been acquitted on the State of the Union. Because guess what? You've not been acquitted. You've not been acquitted. So that's something that they got. Then come Wednesday, it will be the final vote. And then we can move on from this nightmare that has been, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if you dislike me or not, it's been a joke from the beginning, the way the Republicans have handled this, the way the Democrats have handled this. This has not been a good look for America. It hasn't been. I love the fact that we have things in place to protect ourselves. I love that, but I hate the fact that we're so partisan that we look for every reason now to come after this president, and I have a feeling in the future this is the way that all things are going to be which I don't think is good for us at all. And I also don't like the way that this president hasn't been called on the carpet. Do I think this, I've always said, I do not believe this rises to the level of removal. But in saying that, I think the way this has been handled on both sides has been awful. Nancy Pelosi sort of censured him. They could still make some sort of a, 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 a of deal to censure him in the Senate, which, if you don't know what that is, it's it's uh, it's very interesting. So this is what a censure is. They are essentially going to give you a letter in your file, but it it means a little bit more than that, right? It means a little bit more than that. Kind of what it means, though. It's a letter in your file. But this has not been the best look for America. The way that we've come at each other, and we haven't been good towards each other for a while. And I think that, the way they've battled, and they've used the television and the media, and they've come after one another, has reflected on us, and we've reflected back on them. And I don't think it's a good look. It's uncomfortable the way that we've come after each other. I don't know if the Republicans are going to pay a price at the ballot. I really don't. Right? Just like I don't know if the Democrats will. I'm sure some will, and I'm sure some won't. But at the end of the day, November's coming. That means the Democrats have to have somebody ready to face Trump in November. Who's that person going to be? We'll talk about that. Iowa's coming up on Monday Remember, you still have four senators that are here in D.C. listening to all this stuff. you got Warren, you've got Sanders, you've got Bennett, and you've got Klobuchar. So what's their Monday look like? Because the Iowa caucus is kicking off. So we're going to talk about that. Who could benefit from this? We'll also touch on that as well. The coronavirus, the Super Bowls this weekend. Very excited about the Super Bowl. I am. Give you my pick a little bit later. We'll talk about some of the fun stuff. The prop bets, kids. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. We also have a poll. We'll touch on that straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. 
This is Chad Benson. There has been a lot of negotiating about this. Republicans are eager to put impeachment behind them, but Democratic senators want a chance to go on the record and have their say on the Senate floor. And they will now have that chance, but it also means that this trial will go beyond the Iowa caucuses and the State of the Union. Oh, yes, Mary Bruce right there. Uh... Yeah, so that's what we're doing. This thing's never ending. Jeez, it's like an itch that won't leave. Joining us now, Greg Columbus, uh, Radio America's uh, esteemed and amazing uh, news director, also the host of the Three Martini Lunch. And we are going to get more of this next week, including potentially 15 minutes each to get on the floor and ramble, Greg. My God, is it never ending? <laughs> Oh, that's what the Democrats want. They're thinking about throwing amendments out there. At least they have. Uh, They got their biggest goal, I think, though, installing this. The last thing they wanted was President Trump doing a victory lap Tuesday night with the State of the Union. So the fact that the vote is on Wednesday gives them the tiniest fig leaf of cover here. But uh, the only good news is, is that most of the floor speeches are on Tuesday. And if you give 15 minutes to 100 people, that's 1,500 minutes, I'm guessing, Maybe not everybody's going to use it all, but who knows? But hopefully, hopefully, 4 o'clock Eastern time on Wednesday, uh, we get to the finish line here. So is that what time that the, the, it would look like? They would start earlier in the morning? Because the Senate usually likes to start right around the crack of whenever they all wake up and people are getting off work. <laughs> Well, John Roberts has a day job, so that's why we've been starting all these impeachment uh, trial portions at 1 o'clock in the afternoon because he's hearing oral arguments at the Supreme Court in the morning. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the Senate doesn't kill himself. And, you know, these, these lawmakers, the fact that they're even here on a Friday is kind of unusual. They're usually there from Tuesday to Thursday, and then they, they take the three- or four-day weekend. So uh, the fact That's a that, hell of a job. <laughs> the impeachment schedule makes you be there. Theoretically, six days a week is uh, it's just brutal for these people. Poor guy. Brutal. My God, 40 hours in a week a row of sitting here without my phone and having to listen to these people ramble on. By the way, I, I thought that Chief Justice Roberts did a pretty good job, all things considered. You know, I know that, you know, some people are like, oh, well, you know, he said he wasn't going to make the, the, the cast the final decision if it was 50-50 and... But, you know, he said, look, I'm not doing that. I'm not an elected official. I have a different branch of the government, and it's a co-equal branch. You guys are the Americans' choice, so you should sort it out. No, that's exactly right, and I think that's good discretion on his part. Uh, This is the same guy who basically, when he upheld Obamacare, uh, which a lot of conservatives don't like, said, look, it's not my job to fix what Congress did, even if it's a terrible law. If it's fully unconstitutional, then, yeah, i got to do something about it. But he found a way. A lot of folks would say, uh, curiously, to make it survive. But he understands the difference between the three branches of government. I think that's important. And, you know, the chief justice is the presiding officer, but he doesn't have to make a lot of decisions. He basically announces the vote totals on things, recognizes the leaders to speak, and uh, he read the questions for two days. Except And made sure they didn't yell at each other, too. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He did correct them for for their lack of decorum at one point at about one in the morning. So... Uh, but uh, I'm sure he really enjoyed the question Elizabeth Warren asked uh, yesterday, where isn't this a stain on Chief Justice Roberts and the Supreme Court if there aren't witnesses somehow? That didn't go over well, and actually factored into Lisa Murkowski deciding not to go for witnesses because she saw that the, the whole thing was just kind of a political theater. Yeah, talking to Greg Columbus here, uh, Radio America's uh, head uh, news director over there. You know, the Lisa Murkowski thing, it started with Nadler and Schiff and the cover up and co conspirators. And then again, you went on to, you know, the stain on, on Chief Justice Roberts. And, and she, I think a lot of what put her off on so much of this was the way that they went about doing things in their attitude that. You know, she started looking and saying, this is so partisan that we're not even having a real conversation. And you guys are trying to almost guilt us into doing something. And I think people don't have any any idea that on, was it Monday or Tuesday when Nadler went after them? That really, she said, changed a lot of her mind and that, you know, she's going to look at things differently now. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, what lawyer goes to the jury and basically says, if you don't decide the way I want you to, you're all part of a cover-up. Usually you're kind of trying to butter them up, win them over, make it, make yourself seem like a reasonable guy, and 
and maybe um, win over enough people to get witnesses. But when you uh, basically insult the people you need to help you get to that point, you can't be too shocked when they're not on your side when the vote rolls around. So let's look at this in, in a different way. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, they would have had witnesses. Do you fathom anywhere in the dark recesses of any mind of the senators on the right side of the aisle that that would have changed any of their minds, no matter what Bolton said or, or you know, any of them? I mean, you know, they want Mick Mulvaney, you know, all of the people they were calling, you know, would that have changed anybody's mind? No. I mean, before they even swore in and promised to be impartial, I guarantee you more than 95 of them already knew locked in how they were going to vote you might have gotten to witnesses though Uh, but had you gotten to the witnesses there's no way you're getting 20 republicans under no situation i mean bolton would have to have the most shocking allegations beyond yes it was a quid pro quo um i mean that 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 you you would have had to absolutely have jaw-dropping evidence and you know like like lamar alexander and 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 other people have said uh, even if it's all true uh, we don't think it rises to that. Now, I, if if the parties had been reversed and a Democratic president had done the same thing, probably both sets uh, of parties in the Senate would have the exact opposite opinion of it because that's the way Washington is right now. But uh, no, you're never getting a 67 right now in Washington in either direction. And you're certainly not going to pick off 20 Republicans. No. Who do you think uh, gained from this and who do you think loses from this? I, I, I said earlier I don't know how the Republicans look to to because a good portion, no matter what poll you looked at it, whether it was in the the mid sixties to the mid seventies, it was definitely a situation out there where it seemed to be that uh, a good portion of America wanted to see witnesses. No, the polls on that were pretty lopsided. As much as Washington was divided, seventy seventy five percent wanted witnesses. And I assume with the Bolton revelations, that only solidified, if maybe even grew a little bit. So, you know, your Republicans who are up for reelection, particularly in swing states, are going to have a lot of uh, questions and angry voters to face. Cory Gardner in Colorado already had a tough race. Martha McSally, she's running against an astronaut who's married to Gabby Giffords, for heaven's sake. She already had a tough yeah. race. That's not going to get any easier. Mm-hmm. Um and There's, she's awful, uh, by the way. I, look, I've interviewed. I, I I know Martha. She is she is not personable. Off the air, she's okay. She's very quiet. Uh, she is. She's she's. I everything about her is awkward, if that makes sense. And they're going to pour a ton of money in here, and she's going to go against Kelly, who you know her big thing is she was a fighter pilot. Well, so was he, and he was an astronaut. So he's even went higher. And, you know, and his wife survived being shot in the face. And it's just just so many things. And she didn't win in a red state against a very progressive woman in Kirsten Cinema. There's there's seats to be had out there, but there's also more seats that the Democrats are defending. And there's some places out there where they should be worried. No, absolutely. Yeah, the Democrats have some defense to play, too. Obviously, Doug Jones in Alabama. I assume he probably thinks he's already going to go, depending on who the nominee is. But since it's not going to be Roy Moore, uh, I think the handwriting's on the wall there. Uh, The Republicans have a pretty impressive candidate in Michigan named John James. Lost to Debbie Stabenow last time, but Gary Peters is a weaker incumbent this time for the Democrats. Most people in Michigan don't even know who he is. And so there there are opportunities around the country for the Republicans to gain one, maybe two if things go well. Uh, And then they just have to play a considerable amount of defense because they did pretty well six years ago. And uh, it, the Democrats are going to need a perfect storm to get to a majority. And part of that would be winning back the White House. So Mike Pence can't be the tiebreaker. Um, but uh, in the end, uh, so many of these states are pretty wide margins. Um, it's hard to see that it's going to be a massive swing. Tom Tillis, North Carolina could be uh, another one that's pretty tight, that's going to be a massive battleground state. Joni Ernst in Iowa, she's been pretty strident lately, so um, they, they kind of like him a little more uh, mild-mannered there, like Chuck Grassley uh, in Iowa. So we'll see if that uh, and it ends up hurting her at all. But, uh, look, in the end, Donald Trump's at the top of the ballot, and that's going to be, that's going to be the, uh, the litmus test in 50 states in the District of Columbia. Absolutely. Greg Rumbers, appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate that so much. We'll talk to you soon. 
You got it. Thanks, Dad. Greg Columbus, host of a Three Martini Lunch and the news director at Radio America. Uh, th- there is a lot of seats that are up in the Senate for the Democrats, uh, and it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Like I say, I, w- I have a tough time thinking that Martha McSally is going to beat Kelly, Mark Kelly out here. It, it's going to be close. She's just very awkward, right? He's not much of a, a you know mover and a shaker either, but she's very, you know, like when you talk to her sometimes off the air, she's very, she's much better. But it's just not, you know, she's just, there's, there's, it's not there. And, you know, then you had the, uh, I'm not going to talk to you, whatever she said the other day. <laughs> she's like, you know, you liberal hack or whatever. It's, it doesn't do you any good. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be. We could be looking at a flip-flopping here. Who knows? Maybe they lose the House and then the the Senate goes to the Democrats. And Trump will bring people out to vote against him, but he'll also bring people out to vote for him. So it's going to be crazy for sure. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Talk a little Super Bowl. See what's going on there. I'm kind of excited about that. Norovirus. Not around. Conora, or as I like to say, the Corona virus, a very tasty virus indeed, if you like Corona, is spreading. And that's interesting. But how worried should you be? Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show, where the sensible center hangs out. Hey, you. That doesn't mean you can put your feet up on the table. You're despicable. This is Chad Benson. World famous Ocean Drive here in South Beach has been closed down to cars and trucks. It's just foot traffic, tons and tons of foot traffic. Thousands of people, many of them wearing the red and gold of the San Francisco 49ers or the red and gold of the Kansas City Chiefs. All of them anticipating a big game on Sunday. Yeah. All of them. Big game. We had a guy who won uh, tickets. He was in the station yesterday. I'm like, you got the tickets? He's like, yeah, I'm super excited. I go, what are you going to do with them? Because oh, I'm going to take my son. I said, you're not going to sell them? He goes, what do you think I'll get for them? I said, 20, 25 grand? Closer? You might get 30 grand. He goes, really? He goes, man, I'm, uh, I don't know. I don't you think I get 30? I said, you never know, man. I mean, there's somebody that hasn't been to a game of this magnitude for the Chiefs, maybe since they were a little boy. And they've been a diehard Chiefs fan. And they've done really well. And money's not an issue. And 30 grand, yeah, they may pay that. But I think you'd easily get 20. Right? I think the ticket on the secondary market's going for about 19-something. And these are pretty good tickets. So you probably could get closer to 20. That was the average. He's like, you think? I said, I would would think about it. I I would think about it. Definitely think about it. Exciting, though. I'm pumped. I am absolutely pumped about this. It's going to be good. It's going to be a good game. I mean, you're talking about two teams here that are just right now playing so well. Like, they are – I look at the Chiefs and I'm thinking, that offense, right, and him. Because he was totally, really kind of pushed to the background. Last year he came out and he just stunned the NFL, 50 touchdowns, 5,000 yards. It was was insane, right? But then they lost – and this year he came back, and it wasn't quite the thing. And then all of a sudden Lamar Jackson took off, and oh, my God. And all of a sudden Patrick Mahomes seemed to be pushed. And then he got injured. He was out a couple weeks. And there wasn't that, like, everybody was waiting for the topper. But then you look at his numbers, and they were amazing. He is the best player in football. Lamar Jackson's the MVP this year, but he is the best player in football. Then on the other side, you got a team that's just awesome across the board. I mean, just great weapons. They could run the ball. They'll put it up 22 to 25 times this weekend unless they fall far behind, which I don't think they will. And their defense is beast. 
I'm pumped. I'm excited. I'll tell you what, it's better than this. It's better than watching this stuff. It's better than listening to these kind of things. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Russia, if China, if someone else offers you information on an opponent, should they accept it or should they call the FBI? I think maybe you do both. I think you might want to listen. I don't, there's nothing wrong with listening. If somebody called from a country, Norway, we have information on your opponent. Oh, I think I'd want to hear it. They have information. I think I'd take it. If we feel there's corruption, we have a right to go to a foreign country. And by the way, likewise, China should start an investigation into the Biden. Because what happened in China is just about as bad as what happened with uh, with Ukraine. <laughs> He's going to be emboldened now. Is he really going to be emboldened? Is that really going to happen? I I don't I don't I don't know if he's going to be emboldened. Maybe, right? I think Trump doesn't need anything to feel emboldened to do the things he do. Again, Rakowski was the one that put it over, but Lamar was the one last night that really was the stinger. Uh, and then you know Elizabeth Warren, and she said this was one of the big things that 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 Murkowski said when she heard this that really kind of you know put her over that. Yeah, I'm doing this. At a time when large majorities of Americans have lost faith in government, does the fact that the Chief Justice is presiding over an impeachment trial in which Republican senators have thus far refused to allow witnesses or evidence contribute to the loss of legitimacy of the Chief Justice, the Supreme Court, and the Constitution? Yeah. And guess what? She said last night that was kind of the final straw. From you're part of the cover up with Nadler and Schiff and you guys are co-conspirators to to across the board, just coming out and and coming after the the Republicans and almost putting them on trial. I think that. Was it and I think they had a chance to get her, you know, she said, you know, when one of the other things that offended her and it was the fact that they said none of you are paying attention. And she's like, I'm writing down notes. I'm listening to every single thing that everybody has. And for you to say that to me is an insult. Didn't matter, though, right? Because they kept insulting. And they insulted their way right out of there. So there's some witnesses. No. No witnesses. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Take the poll. How do you think this makes the Republicans look? Does it make them look horrible? Does it make them look okay? Take the poll at Chad Benson Show. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Are there any senators in the chamber wishing to change his or her vote? If not, the yeas are 49, the nays are 51. The motion is not agreed to. Under the previous order, the Senate stands in recess subject to the call of the chair. Oh, what? Oh, they're still talking about this? No, it's over now. They've all been sent home. Those of you who just woke up and care, there are no witnesses. They've cut a deal now. And the deal looks like this. Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. They will all arrive. And in doing so, all the senators will have 10 minutes to yap their trap. Up to four hours is all they're getting, though, right? So there you go. Then they'll... Closing arguments and a final vote on Wednesday. In between, we've got Iowa and the caucus for the Democrats and 
We've got the State of the Union. What does it mean? Nothing, because the Super Bowl's this weekend, and more people are going to be watching that, and I'm super pumped. I am super pumped about the Super Bowl. Who is it? Really is far more entertaining. Like, because here's the thing. If you knew who was going to win the Super Bowl this weekend, how fun would that be, right? If you knew what the final score was going to be, right? And that it was going to be just played out, and you'd seen some of the you know, highlights, but then you had to, you wouldn't watch it, right? And that's what this was. The good news is we don't know who's going to win the Super Bowl. We know we got two great teams. It's going to be fun. A halftime show. They got great prop bets. Here's some of the fun prop bets that include things like will. You guys ready for this? Will Pitbull show up? The halftime show. Right? I mean, he's got to. It's Miami. He is Mr. Miami, right? He's got to show up. It's just that's that he's got to. How long will Demi Lovato sing the national anthem? What's the over under on that? A lot of good stuff. We're gonna be looking at some fun stuff. I'm excited though. Very excited. It's crazy right there. One of the things that's very interesting about the Super Bowl, more so now that people are, are out and about crazy at the at the Capitol, you know, all marching on the Capitol, is just what a huge thing the Super Bowl is in the sense of how we go about protecting the Super Bowl. Right? It's a dangerous place for athletes. You know, they talked about Miami and races and this, that, and the other, but Take away all of that stuff and look at it from the security, hey, what could possibly go wrong scenario. Miami brings a whole host of unique security challenges. We went airborne with Customs and Border Protection's Air and Marine team. What are the challenges of securing a place like this? Well, first of all, we're surrounded by water. So it's really important that we have our maritime assets out on the water, actively patrolling, looking for any uh, threats that might come to the Super Bowl. Above Hard Rock Stadium, the FAA will restrict airspace, and Black Hawk helicopters will patrol the skies looking for any unauthorized aircraft, including drones. Yeah, drones. Man, I saw this AI drone the other day. Phil, you would have enjoyed this. It's an AI drone, and it's about the size of your palm. And it has like a little bit of C, uh, like C4 in it, and it flies around, and it will fly into somebody's head, and it'll explode, and it's like a bullet that goes in there. Love and it. And they can, yeah, it's total, it's total crazy, and it's like super DARPA. And they, you know, imagine a thousand of them just flying around. It's insane. So you've got Miami with their very unique situation of having so much water that they're going to have to defend, right? Because Remember, 9-11 happened, and then we had Boston. We haven't had anything that rises to the level of that 9-11, right? We haven't had an attack on a sporting event. We haven't had an attack on a concert. We haven't had, I mean, we've had issues and attacks, but we haven't had that kind of level when you think of movies, you know, uh, the Tom Clancy books. What was that one where uh, Ben Affleck was playing Jack Ryan and they blew up uh, the football game? We haven't had that. Thank God. And the security's insane. But it's not just terrorism, because let's forget, let's not forget, it's Miami, so people have fun. And at Port Miami, one of the nation's busiest, agents are on the lookout for drugs and contraband, including counterfeit Super Bowl souvenirs, which are already popping up. Yeah, those are everywhere. Those are like every. Where? The souvenirs are everywhere. People making money, getting paid, having fun. That's it. Then you got the halftime show, which will be a little different. One of the things that's been a very big shadow over the Super Bowl this week is the death of Kobe Bryant. I mean, it shows you how big of an athlete and a personality he was, and they're going to address it. 
At a press conference ahead of Sunday's show, co-headliner Jennifer Lopez says she didn't know Kobe Bryant well, but her fiancé, Alex Rodriguez, did. And he was devastated. He knew Kobe very well. They kind of came up together. She says Bryant's death has created a sound around the world of, like, we have to love each other and we have to be together and we have to support each other and we can't be so at odds all the time. And she says Sunday's Super Bowl halftime show with her and Shakira will reflect that message. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. It'll be uh, interesting to see. And again, one of the cool bets out there is the, and I love it. One of the prop bets, because you know the prop bet is are all the crazy bets, like how long will the anthem go, and and you know ov- you know not just the over under stuff, but one of the prop bets is will will. Pitbull, Mr. Worldwide, who's from Miami, show up. It's possible. It is possible. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Last night, when it came to impeachment, to me, the dagger that finished it all and made this just basically today a uh, there was just nothing. I mean, this this was it. This was just a foregone conclusion after last night when Lamar Alexander let everybody know what he was doing. Or trying to ask him, you know, when did you make your decision? And he's like, you know, oh, I've made it. And did you tell your Republican leader? Yes, I've told the leader. When will we find out? Within the hour. We're waiting for the statement. It comes. And he is a no on witnesses. That's it. So a no on witnesses means that it's pretty much just done. Right. They're going to have Monday. They'll have some closing arguments, but everybody gets like 10 minutes to speak. You have four hours to do that. That'll drag on for part of the day. But the final vote won't come to Wednesday. I'll be honest with you. Monday, I'm not covering it that much. I don't I don't I don't want to hear them get up there and yip and yap. Right. Wednesday will be more important. I'd rather focus a little bit more on Iowa and then, of course, State of the Union on on Tuesday uh, and then the final vote will be something big. But we kind of knew where this was going. And there's only so much you could say. And too many people, this is important. It stopped being important when we became as tribal as we became. It stopped being important when we knew what the outcome was going to be based on the fact that we are so pulled apart right now that it's hard to believe any. Look, I'll be honest with you. It's hard to believe anything any of these people say. I don't believe a word any of them say. I don't. When it comes to big stuff like this, and whether or not you're really doing this because you believe this is for the better of the country, or you're doing this because this is the betterment of you, it is making my life better. This is better. So I don't know. I'm just very skeptical of, of so much of this crap at this moment in time. That is, that's that's where I stand. I'm just so skeptical. And I'm so frustrated. I am. You know who's not frustrated? The British. Prime Minister Boris Johnson calls Brexit not an end, but a beginning. A moment, he sees, of real national renewal and change. But of course, time will tell. Opportunities will present themselves, but the European exit is also a gamble, a huge gamble that could be paid in a weakened economy and job losses, at least in the short term. The road, however, is now open. The stage is set. Britain's fate now rests solely in its own hands. Yeah, and people are excited about it, like her. I've been working towards Brexit for three years, um, but tomorrow's the dawn of a new day, and I'm really excited about it. So we're going to party hard tonight. Even if I have to be carried out on a stretcher, I feel so terrible. I'm still going to party because I can't wait for my country to be free, independent, and great. Yeah, so free, independent, and great. That's it. Big time. So the British will be out. Now, just because they're officially out, does it mean that they're out? It's not until the end of the year that everything's kind of keeps the same. I mean, they're officially out of it, but now it's like cutting the strings and, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's and, and that official transfer, if you will, of, of going away from being such a part of the European Union 47 years to now being back to being, you know, England and, and Britain is it's still going to take till the end of the year. So that's kind of cool, though. Right. So let's see what we've learned this year. Uh, the British, uh, uh, they've uh, the monarchy is split up <laughs> and now the British have split up from Europe. We've had a president impeached who 
no witnesses for the first time in our history, all on a partisan, I mean, you know, this wasn't bipartisan, this was a partisan show from the time it was in the House and they started talking about it to now. Yeah, crazy. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson. Sure, what was your Twitter? It's the Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. Super Bowl this weekend. We talk about impeachment all we want. It's over. It's done. It's dusted. All the final vote on Wednesday. Trump is obviously not going anywhere. So be prepared for nine months of craziness. Not a shocker. Let's look at stuff that matters. Super Bowl Sunday. But let's look at some of the prop bets. So, producer Phil, over under right now sits... Over two minutes, minus 240, under two minutes, plus 165. What are you taking? I'm going to have to take the over on that one. Take the over. So if you're betting the over, it may be a bad bet. bet. As it turns out, in her rehearsals, minute 52 on average is what she's hitting. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, what would you do? How about this? Will Demi Lovato, the singer of the National Anthem, on Sunday... Omit a word from the anthem. Plus 450, minus 850. What is she going mm. to admit? Omit. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, 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 here's one, though. That right. Will any scoring drive take less than it takes Demi Lovato to sing the national anthem? Minus 260, plus 175. I say yes, and I'll tell you why. Because even though the defense is great, at some point in time, Tyreek Hill or somebody is going to get loose, and they score fast. I'd take that. Oh, big time. Big, 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 big time. Big time. 323-538-2423. <laughs> at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. So M- Lamar said, nah. Right? Nah. Last night, Murkowski today said, nah. So Republicans grab a hold of this impeachment trial, meaning there is no witnesses. They went, they voted on a few amendments. Trial's going to re-pick up on Monday. It's going to be before that. Everybody's going to have 10 minutes if they want to use it, up to four hours total for everybody combined. So to get up there and to have your say to anybody who's listening at that point in time. That'll start at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, followed by closing arguments, followed by a final vote come Wednesday. And then that'll be that. And then we move on to whatever it is we're moving on to. New Hampshire, I guess. And away it goes. Trump's going to have a... (laughs) Trump's going to have a rally in Iowa on Monday. <laughs> Such, you didn't see, I tweeted a picture of it, or, or the video. If you haven't seen Trump, this is great. So he, when he signed the USMCA, he had this giant box that looked like a cigar box, and it was just full of pens, and he totally was just handing pens out to everybody, and he was scooping them up. Right, like 10, 15 in a hand. He's just handing them to people. And it was mocking, obviously, the whole pen signing of what took place with Nancy Pelosi, you know, and those that horrific, horrible, horrible day. <laughs> she, she felt so sad about. So, so sad. You can take the poll I've got up right now. It's about not impeachment itself, but how does this make the Republicans look that there are no witnesses for the first time ever? 30.4% say horrible. 60.9% say they look fine. 87 too early to tell. I'm kind of in the too early to tell category. 
I think for some it looks bad. I think we also have a very short memory in this country, and we tend to jump around in our anger, you know? Like, do you remember, like, all the stuff that's happened? I mean, do you remember just seven, eight months ago was, like, the worst thing in the world? There were kids in cages and immigration and da-da, and then we were on to something else because this popped up, and then we're on to something else, and then we've got this. And it, it's it's hard to think that this is really going to come back this vote alone and bite them in the butt. I think they've got other problems, and I think they have a good shot of losing both houses. But I also think, you know, we have a long way out. And they're going to be defending more than the Democrats. But the Democrats have some very vulnerable areas, maybe more so than Republicans. They need, I mean, you know, think about it. You know, it's 51 to 49. You need three. Get that back, really. And you got the independence, you know, what's Bernie do? Right? So you become president, so then you're gonna lose him. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Well, it's over, it's done, it's dusted. We now know what it's going to look like next week. Joining us now, Greg Columbus, Three Martini Lunch host and of the head guy at News over at Radio America. And Greg, uh, there was a little bit of negotiation going on a little while ago in the Senate because uh, Chuck Schumer got a few things that he wanted, including <sighs> 10 minutes each for everybody to stand up and bitch. <laughs> Yes, yes, we're going to have a lot of people talking, some longer probably than 10 minutes, some a little less, and in the end, no one's mind is going to be changed. There are still some folks on the fence, though, just because it was 51-49 on the witnesses doesn't necessarily mean that'll be the final vote, but uh, the fact that they won't get to 67 has been known since well before they even started this in the House. So, uh, yeah, a lot of work, yeah, well, that's a lot true. of talking, and uh and we knew what the finish line was going to be the whole time. So the fact that the Democrats are appalled here is uh, not to be unexpected, but uh, uh, it's, it's a pretty good acting job. So Lisa Murkowski and Lamar uh, Alexander, Lamar Alexander essentially said, you know, look, I know that he's, he, the, he did the things that you guys are saying. And in saying that, I don't think that that is cause to remove him. That's kind of like, I understand what he's saying is, you know, look, yeah, it's uncomfortable. It's not good. Uh, nobody is arguing that. Trump's not even arguing. Hell, Trump's not even not only not arguing that, said he would even do it again if somebody presented him with the opportunity to get some dirt on an opponent. In saying that, is it removable? I didn't think it was. No, it's a perfect call, Chad. Come on. That's, that's that's what we've heard now for months. And so this is not all that different than the Clinton impeachment. I mean, the circumstances are different. Democrats will tell you that was just about sex. Republicans will tell you Ken Starr found 11 felonies. But in the end, the reason Bill Clinton did, didn't get removed from office is because Joe Lieberman came to the floor when things were really looking like they could go south for Bill Clinton. He goes on there because he was a family values kind of guy, and he just ripped Clinton stem to stern, but said, ultimately, this does not rise to the level of impeachment. I will not vote to convict. And the number of Democrats that trotted right out and said, yeah, what Joe Lieberman said uh, is exactly what happened then. Uh, different circumstances now, different issues, but it's ultimately the same conclusion by the party of the president, and it shouldn't come as any surprise. 
Will we have a few Republicans, Greg, that are going to come out and absolutely say, look, this is unacceptable, this is no way, and kind of do, you know, exactly what Lieberman did, which is, you know, uh, really talk about how awful this was, and at the same time, you know, come out and say, but at the end of the day, is it worth, is it worth, you know, essentially saying, hey, you 62 million people vote for him, we're going to negate your vote, and we're going to remove him from the office. Uh, It's not worth that. You'll definitely get some tisk tisking from the same people who were, you know, twisting in the wind over whether to allow witnesses. I'm sure Romney will have plenty negative to say about the president. Susan Collins probably will, too. Murkowski and Alexander. And like we said, Alexander from the get go. Murkowski has blasted the House for the process and Trump for his conduct. Uh, in the end, I'd be surprised if anyone other than Romney actually voted to convict. It's possible Collins would, but uh, she's got a lot of campaign considerations this year and uh, Romney's not up till 2024 at which point Trump would be on his way out even if he wins again so uh, Mitt doesn't have a whole lot to lose here but uh, some of the others might do you think there's any Democrats Greg that may say you know what uh, I wanted to hear witnesses but I don't think it rises to this level like I, I thought maybe cinema Doug Jones I mean is there anybody uh, that's a good question. I, if I had to put money on it, I'd say Joe Manchin probably will. West Virginia is a very Trump-friendly state, and so even though he's just been reelected again, uh, I don't think he wants to run that risk. And so I would be surprised if he didn't at least vote not guilty on one, if not both, of the articles. Um, cinema, I think cinema has got designs of a big future in Democratic politics, and to vote not guilty – certainly on both, but even on one might be a, uh, a big blow to those uh, future plans. So I'd be surprised if she ultimately did it. Doug Jones has just got to come to a decision of, do I try to appease a very conservative state and hope that somehow I can cloud a victory against Jeff Sessions or Tommy Tuberville in the Senate race? Or do I just admit the fact that I'm not running against Roy Moore, I have no chance, and I don't like this president, and I'm going to vote him guilty anyway. So uh, it's yeah. possible Doug Jones might try to save his own bacon, but uh, in the end, uh, if I had to bet, I'd say it's Mansion stands alone, just like just like on Kavanaugh. Uh, talking to uh, Greg Columbus, uh host of Three Martini Lunch and the news director of Radio America. Let's switch. Monday comes around. They're going to be doing all this stuff. Iowa's going on. I look at Iowa, right. man, and I, I can't tell you who I think is going to win this thing. I think... One minute, I think ah, it's got to be Biden. The next minute, I'm like, it's got to be Bernie. I mean, what's your sense? Well, the polling, and you and I talked about this when you were kind enough to fill in on the three martini lunch this week, is that the, the momentum polling wise seems to be with Bernie, even though he's been stuck in the Senate for the past couple of weeks. He's got the, he's got the momentum at the right time, uh, you know, for four or five years now. The people that love Bernie Sanders intensely love Bernie Sanders. And Joe Biden, some of its people who obviously have fond memories of him from the Obama administration, other people who are making a more calculated decision, thinking he's their best shot to take down Trump later this year. So it might not be the same intensity as with Bernie, but it's, it, it's these two guys. It's going to be these two guys. And Iowa's going to be these two guys probably in New Hampshire. Maybe maybe Buttigieg gets a little bit uh, of traction in one of these states. But even after that, it's it's. It's head-to-head all the way here, and I think Bernie's got the edge in Iowa. I think he honestly probably cleaned Hillary's clock four years ago. The way it's structured uh, with how many different caucuses you win, uh, she ended up winning a bunch of tiebreakers. But I think if you counted all the people who showed up for him four years ago, if I had to guess, uh, he probably would have won that. So I, I think Bernie wins Iowa, and you see these headlines now where the DNC is trying to change the rules about super delegates and – Trying to find ways to squeeze them out of the convention already shows they're real nervous, and uh, sounds like they have reason to. So how does Bernie look? Like he, it, but I think he can hate yeah. the Republicans all he wants, and I got no problem with that. I mean, he can disdain everything. About, how does he trust the Democrats? Because he rails against them, but he caucuses with them. He's running as a Democrat when the reality is he's never been a Democrat and he never will be a Democrat. How do you trust them after what they did to you four years ago and already now they're trying to change the rules? I mean, I don't get it. It's the only vehicle for him. 
I mean, you can run as a third-party candidate, but we've seen over and over again lately that that's not going to get you anywhere. And so he would have been an also-ran, maybe 1%, 2% if he tried to go third-party. And then the Democrats would hate him if, if that couple of percent ended up costing their nominee the election. So uh, not only does he want to stay in their good graces, but it's his shot at getting there. And uh, if Liz Warren craters, uh, a plurality of her voters would probably go over to Bernie. And um, if he can survive South Carolina and Super Tuesday and not get completely wiped out and he can move on to the rest of the to the calendar, uh, this could be a, a slugfest between him and Biden. Uh, all the way down to the convention. Talking to Greg Columbus uh, from Radio America. Okay, Greg, here's something that's very interesting. We talk about Bernie. And again, I think Bernie would make noise. I think if they screwed him again, he would think about running as the third party because I think his, 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 his base is so big now. Everybody knows who he is. There is no, I'm not quite sure. I could have seen it if he would have ran third party in the last one. But this time, I don't think he would have to worry about it. I think he's been through it. He's got the ground game. But there is one wild card out there, and that is Bloomberg. And I think Bloomberg all along has thought to himself, I'm going to make this a brokered convention, and I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to convince them that I'm the only person that can beat this. They don't like Bernie, and they don't really trust Joe, and they think they know Elizabeth Warren can't do the she may be able to do some presidential stuff, but she can't win that election against him in a strong economy. But I think he thinks he can do this. Yeah, that's his argument. He's done it. Uh, he's got 12 years of, of competent experience in New York, styrofoam and straws and, and big gulfs, notwithstanding uh, law and order. Things went pretty well in that in that area. The economy did pretty well during that time other than the financial crisis, of course. Um, and Bloomberg is going to be on the debate stage now, which on one sense gives the other candidates a chance to go after him. And uh, it also gives him a little bit of a higher profile than just the ads. People will get to see him interact with the other candidates. Uh, but the DNC, once again, uh, fiddling with the rules so he doesn't have to meet the donor requirements since he's self-funded. He only has to meet the polling requirements. And so you've got people like Cory Booker and others who have no longer qualified for debates. Now that he's out of the race, it doesn't matter. But they're saying, hey, man, where were these where were these real changes uh, when I could have used them? But uh, because, Corey, Bloomberg, you had no money for anything. He's putting in hundreds of millions and billions of dollars and you guys are begging for scraps. That's why. Exactly. He's already spent two hundred million dollars basically since Thanksgiving. And the guy's worth fifty two billion. So he could do that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> He might have made two hundred million since billion. Thanksgiving, so it's a push. <laughs> it's exactly right. So I mean, his delegate map looks a lot harder than Bernie's or Biden, but uh, anybody with that much money to burn can have a big influence. And he says, even if he's not the nominee, he's going to keep firing all the ads up there to take down Trump. So uh, Mike could be a factor, even if he gets nowhere near the nomination. Yeah, yeah, it would be. It's again, and they can get mad at him. I like the fact that he's self-funding himself. I got no problem with that. If you want to throw your own money at this. I got zero problems with any of that. None. Oh, exactly. And he's showing he's making some headways. Well, yeah, and he's, uh, you know, those people's the, those ads, they, they come on before every YouTube video, it seems like, and all these other uh, streaming videos that we see. And so repetition helps. It's helped Tom Steyer to some extent. Nobody even knew who he was. Uh, Mike Bloomberg, uh, he's, he's big on climate change. He's big on gun control, which the, the base absolutely loves. And he's economically competent. He's obviously built his own business, and he didn't run New York City into the ground. And so uh, yeah. that can help him. I don't think he, I don't think we're going to see much out of him in the early states. So he's really going to have to make a push somewhere else. But you just never know. I mean, you had Joe Biden earlier this week telling voters to vote for somebody else. So you, you just never know. You never know. Talking to Greg Columbus. Last question, man. Appreciate you coming on, taking your time on this crazy night. Uh, Sunday, sure. big day. The world will be watching. It has nothing to do with impeachment, but it is a battle. It is the 49ers. It is the Chiefs. What you got? We were talking about this earlier today. I'm a Bears fan, which means that I grew up in the black and blue division. I like running the football, and I like defense, and that means the Niners. I love Patrick Mahomes. He's probably the most electrifying player in the league, he and Lamar Jackson. But uh, if you can run the ball, you can gobble up the clock and keep the other offense off the field. I think – in a close game, it's going to be the Niners, but I won't be shocked if I'm dead wrong. It's going to be amazing. It is absolutely going to be amazing. Appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks for taking time uh, on this busy Friday night. Appreciate that, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. You got it. Thanks, Chad.
Greg Crumpers right there, Radio America's uh, news director as well as the host of the Three Martini Lunch. Check it out on uh, 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 iTunes, pretty much everywhere you can check out podcasts. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Talk a little bit more of the Super Bowl. we got crazy prop bets that include Bitcoin. Yeah, that's right, Bitcoin. And we'll put a bow on this one, and I'll give you my prediction for Sunday's Super Bowl. Chad Benson Show. Deal this. Mueller, arrest me. Chad will trade you two perjury charges for one collusion and throw in a reduced charge of obstruction for free. Yeah, I'd do that. You're just listening to The Chad Benson Show. That's it. Ready. It's on like Donkey Kong. This weekend, Super Bowl 54 will take place in Miami at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. We've been talking about prop bets all night. It's way more interesting than a lot of this other stuff that's going on in D.C. All right, so what's our bet, Phil? You're taking the Chiefs? I'm going to take the Chiefs, and I'm going to take the uh, over on the National Anthem. And I'm, I'm a horrible the, better, so this is a good thing. I'm taking an under on that, their National Anthem. And I am taking the Niners. They're my pick anyways, and we'll break that down a little bit. What should we do here? What do you like? Uh, what are you thinking? I'll send you. Uh, you I'll send you some of my stuff from the grill. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. You do that, and I'll send you some. Uh, I'll send you some stuff like butcher box stuff. Okay, that's cool. All right, it's on. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff. National anthem we've talked about. How about this? Will any player take a knee during the national anthem? Four twenty-five, yes. Minus eight hundred, no. Explain to everybody, Phil, the, the four twenty-five, the minus eight fifty, because I don't think a lot of people understand that. Um, I barely understand it. I think with the plus, you bet a hundred dollars and you win four fifty. And I think with the minus, you bet whatever number that is to win a hundred dollars. Yeah, there you go. So it's not really thrilling, All right? So now let's get to the real stuff, stuff that matters. The halftime show. My favorite of all of these is: Will Shakira have a wardrobe malfunction? <laughs> Plus twelve hundred, and hope so. Minus. 7,500. How many wardrobe changes will Jennifer Lopez have? Over, unders, two and a half. Mm, That's a tough one right there. That's a tough one. I'd say over, right? I'd say over. Here's one. Will any of the fly girls from Living Color make an appearance? Because you know she was in Living Color as a fly girl. Are they going to have four twenty four? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, do they got all kinds of... Will Enrique Iglesias, Gloria Estefan, anybody who's ever lived in Miami or passed over Miami that's a star, will they make an appearance? Pitbull, pl- minus 650, plus 375. Man, I think Pitbull is totally going to be there. He's got to. Will they twerk? Will Will Smith make an appearance? These are some of the bets you can make. These are some of the bets that you can make. How about this? Will either kicker hit the upright or crossbar on a missed field goal or extra point? Plus 350, minus 600. Will Donald Trump attend the game? Plus 300, minus 500. Who will the Super Bowl MVP mention first in his speech? 125, plus 125 says teammates. God plus 250, City plus 500, Coach plus 500, Owner plus 1,400, Family or Family Members plus 700. Doesn't mention any of the above because he's all, I'm a badass. All right, here's my pick. You're going with the Chiefs? I'm going with the Chiefs. Defense wins championship. You're going with the Chiefs. Defense wins championship. Who's got a better defense? Not even close. One thing that they can do that no other team maybe can do 
is use four guys to get to the quarterback, and they're all athletic, led by Bosa. They're going to get after him. He's still going to make plays, Mahomes, because he's that kind of player, but they can double over the top, and it's going to be uncomfortable for him. He'll make more plays with his legs. He's going to put up the ball a lot, but it's not going to be enough because that offense on the other side is going to run the ball down the Chiefs' throat, which is going to open up for Garoppolo. 37-28. Champions right there, 49ers. Have a great weekend. We'll do it again on Monday. As always, night-night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.